so clear. So clear, isn't it? Oh, I hadn't thought I was going to say in my head and I can't remember now. We've just booked this epic campsite for a couple nights at Stony Creek. We're down um, by the creek here. We're going to jump in for a swim and it looks so beautiful. The water's so clear and the water's pretty warm as well, which is good. We're expecting it to be a lot colder. So it's a really nice little hidden bush oasis. It's just so nice and peaceful. There's not really many people camping here. It's good to change it up a little bit. Mm. Bit of a um, change of scenery. Yeah, we're going to stay here for a few days. Mm. What do you reckon? Should we get in? Yep. Yep. Okay. Go for it. Ah! <laughs> it's so nice. Is it? Is it cold? <laughs> no. No, it's actually not. Oh, awesome. When the um, it gets a bit darker, I'll be able to get some nice shots as well. Nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, look at that! Oh <laughs> it's still going. Oh. They're still running down the road. You see how high that one just flew? Bit of morning entertainment. Wow, yeah. Who needs to tell you? Got real life David Attenborough here. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> One of the bush turkeys was getting into our bin bag this morning and there was food everywhere. So I think the other one was coming to help us out and get rid of it, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully he's on our side. Yeah, hopefully. Not just trying to get the food as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
frog in there. Oh no. Oh yeah. We thought we'd give you a bit of a tour inside our little tiny home on wheels. It's a 2010 petrol Hyundai IMAX and his name is Percy, short for Poseidon. One of the reasons we wanted to make this video is because when we were doing our research for the fit out, we couldn't find many other videos on this specific van in the depth that we were looking for. We hope you enjoy the video. We did this whole thing ourselves. Um, Mitch did most of it. I was site supervisor. But first off, we have our kitchen. So it's a pull out kitchen. This folds out and we have a piece. I will get the piece. So this piece just lives slotted down the side of the van, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, but that folds out and just slots in there. And this is the kitchen. We've got the cooker stored here. Uh, while we're driving but when we get to where we're going and we start um, setting up we get the cooker out and we put it on the trestle table that we have as well and that's because there's just not a lot of space in here it's easier um, for the gas bottle as well if we just have it out on the table we've got some stuff stored at the back here just all of our tall sort of items got the wine glass and the olive oil and the plunger and things like that so that's super handy to have and then in this drawer is all of our kitchen items so our plates bowls cups um, all of our utensils got a little cutlery thing there um, avo saver which is really handy and we've just got the grippy mats on the bottom so that sort of keeps everything in place We've got my favourite part of the whole entire van build, the spice rack. Just my pride and joy. Um, now in the top here, so this is our bench, but these are, they both lift up like that. So this is where all our food lives. So we've got that one there and then that one lifts up as well. Um, and we play Tetris to get everything in, but everything usually fits quite nicely. Being a very small space, we definitely tried to maximise every little inch that we could. So we've utilised this little space here for lots of things. Um, we've got our kettle that just lives in there. We've got some little USB ports and stuff which Mitch will talk further about. Fire extinguisher and fire blanket in there as well. Underneath the mattress, we've got some little storage cubes. Um, under there so we've got two of these in this one on the left we've got all of our laptop and camera gear stored under there and we've also got all of Mitch's clothes this is my clothes and um, so these storage boxes have been super handy so I've like sort of um, gotten, gotten everything in compartments and things stored in little bags like this inside the box as well so that's been super handy just to keep everything a bit more organized. So this is obviously the bed where we sleep. Uh, during the day, we put our pillows up on the side here, but in the nighttime, we have an extra piece that slots in this spot because Mitch has long legs. So the extra piece just lives under the mattress here. So we just have to get it out. So that just slots in like that. And then this cushion that lives on the wall here during the day goes on top. Down the back, we have our two big, lovely drawers. And this basically has all of our stuff in it. <laughs> So we've got uh, about five wetsuits in there. Um, this is our little kitchen box with just random kitchen stuff in it. 
um, some oil and car stuff in there, more wetsuits, <laughs> the tarp, uh, and our camp chairs just slot down the side there. Now this drawer isn't as big because we made a little table slot in there. So our little trestle table just lives in there, which is super handy. Um, yeah, we tried to think of every little thing when we were planning the build. And that one has been one of our favorite little features. So this drawer, as I said, it's not as big. Um, we've got a little chopping board table thing that slides around on the top there we'll often have it halfway in like that we can sit in bed and put our cuppers on the bench and we also just take it out and sometimes just take it down to the beach and have our little cheese platter on it things like that so we've loved having that there in this drawer we've just got a butane gas cooker um, some linen towels rugs our hose our runners, dive gear, <laughs> dish rack and dish tub. So we've got a gas bottle and a two burner gas stove, but we also have a butane gas cooker um, that's a lot more portable when we take it down to the beach sometimes, or if we just can't be bothered getting the gas bottle and things like that sorted out, uh, we just use that. So inside the van, we've got a little bookshelf. We've got about a million books in there, probably a bit ridiculous. We've got like our toiletries and stuff up on the top shelf, toothbrushes, ukulele, and our head torches in there as well. Yeah, we love our bookshelf and it's probably one of our favorite sort of aesthetic features of the van. All of our timber finishes are hardwood fence palings. Once you've got a few coats of varnish on them, they look brand new. Alrighty, my turn. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is our water we've got 60 liters of water storage we don't always hold 60 liters we've got a 20 liter jerry in here attached to a hose and the water is just gravity fed we found it on a video on youtube it's a genius idea there's no pump at all just turn it on and water comes pouring out like that there's heaps of pressure in there we've got another one of these setups on the roof which we don't really keep much water in. It's sort of like our shower, but we haven't really used it that much. But if we know we're going somewhere where um, it's not as easy to get water, we'll probably fill that up and have it as a backup. We can connect that hose um, to this one. We've spoken a little bit about this in one of our other videos before, um, and then we can fill this one back up, but that's perfect. That system works so well for us. It's so good. Um, so we're stoked about that. No pump at all. And so we've also got our gas bottle, which is normally stored on the roof in milk crates. We've got two milk crates up there. Gas bottle lives up there. It was a little bit of a pain in the ass um, putting it up and bringing it down every time we wanted to use that stove, um, but just gotten used to it now. So on this side of the van, we've got our fridge. It's a beauty. It's a Dometic 55 litre. Um, and it runs like a dream. It doesn't really draw much power at all. It draws bursts of about three amps and then it'll shut off for a while and it will go back again. Um, we've never had any problems with that. Great fridge. We've got tools stored under here. So I've just got like random bits of pieces, drill, other stuff. And we've got another water jerry in here. So that's one of the 10 liters we've got. And we've also got another 10 liter stored on the other side beside the bed down next to the 20 litre jerry there's another 10 litre in there as well we don't always keep it full because it's a bit of a pain in the ass to get to so in here as well we've got heaps of room down here so i've got a little hammock got the yoga mat fishing rod and we've both got our free dive fins stored down there as well so there's heaps of room um, which makes it really easy we really use every little nook and cranny of storage that we can try and fit everything in. Here we've got our fan. It's a Sirocco 2 fan. Um, they're pretty popular. I've seen them in heaps of other photos. Everyone's got one. It's awesome. Just runs off the 12 volt. Draws next to no power. Um, so great little fan. It's got the spear gun up here, just tied to the roof. So like I said, we've really tried to maximize our storage, make it efficient. And we've got our fruit bag here as well. So all our fruits stored in there. 
good spot for that. And we've also got a hat stored up here. So Mads made this macrame hat holder, which is pretty cool. Got super creative there. Made us live up there, good spot for them. So coming into the front, we've got our electrical setup. The battery is behind the seat here. Dirty clothes bag, which just gets shoved behind the seat. The battery we've got is a 100 amp lithium Enerdrive battery. It's amazing, we've never had any dramas with it. We decided to go with lithium over AGM because the pros heavily outweighed the cons. Um, they are a lot more expensive, that was 950 bucks. But the reasons we did was it's about half the weight. That weighs only like 12 kilos opposed to 25, 30 kilos of an AGM. You can draw these ones down 80 to 90% without hurting the battery uh, and harming the, lot, like the actual life of the battery. Um, and they do live longer anyway. You're gonna get heaps more cycles out of it. You might get 10,000 cycles opposed to 3,000 cycles in an AGM. Um, which is why we went with that because we know it's going to last a lot longer. We're not going to have to replace it in a couple of years time. So to charge the battery, we've got two solar panels. So I've got one on the roof. It's a 120 watt solar panel. And then we've also got a blanket, which we've got hooked up now. That's a 200 watt Kings solar blanket. So uh, when we're parked up anywhere and we want to try and find the best sun that we can, we can pull that blanket out and I just un unplug it from the bonnet under here. So I've got a little Anderson plug in here. This is the blanket. This goes into the battery charger. I'll talk about that in a moment. And this is the one on the roof. So I just unplug the blanket, plug that back in when we want to go and drive. The battery is also charged off the um, car alternator. So when the car's driving and the starter battery is charged up, it flicks over and starts charging the second battery. And what we've got that running into We've got the Red Arc DC to DC charger, the 1225D, so I can charge a maximum of 25 amps into the battery um, in an hour. So the solar is running into that, and also it's coming off the starter battery running through that, which will be charging the second battery as well. So we paid the money for Red Arc because we know they're tried and tested. We've never had any dramas with it. Everyone swears by their products. Um, so again, we wanted to make sure that we paid the money now so we're not going to have to pay it again if something goes wrong we've got this xtm switchboard so we've got lights accessories fan running off these we've got the fan on the first one that stays on we can turn the fan on and off on the actual fan as well we've got a light here we've got this one another light at the back however it's also connected to a dimming switch so this one stays on all the time we've got another light here lights over there and this is our accessory to charge our phones off the USB port as well. And we've got a little battery monitor up here. So it gives us the battery voltage, how much um, current it's drawing. We're drawing through the, say the fridge um, or charging phones or anything else and how much we've used before we reset it um, as well. So we don't have the battery percentage, but we can get a fairly good idea of how charged the battery is from the voltage. So. It's generally sitting around 13.3, 13.2 volts. If it drops down to about 13 and below that, that's what we want to make sure that it's getting charged up. So we've got the Victron 400 watt pure sine wave inverter. It's awesome. Um, it's never let us down. It's more than enough for what we need for charging pretty much laptops, camera gear, electric toothbrush. Um, and so we've just got a power board plugged into it which is blue tacked up to the bench top here. And then we can just flick switches on and off what we need. But we generally, if we're not using the inverter, we'll turn that off as well. We also built this little center console into here because these cars don't have one. They don't have the middle seat. Um, so it's just an empty space. So it's actually really good. We could build this, put some cup holders in, and then there's heaps of storage in there. We've just got random stuff like, I don't know, glass chest, rope, all the random things that we don't really use much but it's handy because we can put stuff on there while we're driving. We hope you enjoyed the tour of Percy. Feel free to leave us any questions that you might have in the comments. We'll be more than happy to answer them.